All of the food we eat and much of the clothing we wear comes from plants and animals that are raised on farms. Farms are different in type, in size, and even in name. Welcome to Barn Talk. What happens at the barn stays in the barn, but not today. We're going to let it all out for you guys. Today is going to be a Q&A episode. You guys submit your questions through email, and we're going to answer them here on the show. Pick the best ones that we could find. If you got a question for us for our Q&A episodes, please email us at barntalkshow at gmail.com or DM us on Instagram, DM us on Twitter, DM us on TikTok, write it in the YouTube comments if you're watching on YouTube. Any way you can get us your questions, we're, we're searching for them. So send us a letter. Send us a letter. Send us some whiskey. Send us some bourbon. Whatever, <laughs> it, whatever works for you. Uh, before we get into it, you guys know the drill. If you get any value from the show, share it out with the people that you know. The more you guys do that, the more this show grows. The better, the more guests we can get on. The more episodes we can make. Um, you can also feel free to leave a review on Spotify or Apple. We love hearing from you guys. And uh, we appreciate every single one of you that have been doing that. We're up to 3,000 five-star reviews on Spotify and 1,300 on Apple. So keep leaving those reviews. Last thing you can do to help out the show and help us out here on our family farm is support our direct-to-consumer meat business, Farmer Grade, farmergrade.com. We're gearing up for the holidays. We're going to be doing holiday gift boxes. So if you're a small business owner and you want to gift your employees something nice, a big old box of meat, we know, just give us a go. We got turkeys. We got hams. We're going to also have some prime rib roasts. We're really gearing up for these holidays. So if you are interested at all in getting yourself a turkey for Thanksgiving or Christmas or ham for uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas, give us a go. Give us a go. That's all that we ask. You know, a lot of a lot of people that are on that have YouTube channels or do podcasts or whatever, they're, they're big on Patreon. You know, they want you to go to Patreon and support them. We don't have Patreon. We have something better. We have Metreon. Hell Farmer yeah. Gray, just think of that as like think of that as like Metreon. So, you know, you don't have to give us a donation. Uh, buy yourself some meat. Get something good out of it. You don't wanna you don't want a bumper sticker or a t shirt or anything like that anyway. Get yourself a prime rib roast. Get yourself a ham. It's way better. It way is better. way it is way better. It's we that was all dad right there. He's like, you know what? Got down to shoot a podcast. He's like, you know what? <laughs> All these fucking podcasters got Patreon. We don't got Patreon. We got Metreon. <laughs> they're getting at least they're getting something out of it when yeah. they when they when they do a Metreon purchase. They'll get a whole box of meat. Let's face it. You're gonna get a cheap. You do that. You're gonna get some cheap T-shirt. The first time you wash it, it's gonna shrink or the S is gonna fall out of it or, or off of it or whatever. Or else you're gonna get a stain on it. And if you're going to get a stain on it, hopefully it's from the barbecue sauce that you put on the rack of ribs that you got from Farmer Grade. Yep, that's so right. Can't yep. It. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Uh, anyway, you guys help support the show. If you help Farmer Grade, if you help Barn Talk, if you help this help will do farm, it's all helping us, and it's going to make this show better and get more people on the show to have better conversations. So we appreciate every single one of you guys that supports us in any way, that uh, whether it's sharing the show, whether it's leaving a review, whether it's supporting Farmer Grade, whether it's any other subscribing on YouTube, any other way. Um, we did have somebody bitch. I will say somebody did get a little pissy in the comments last episode. I'm getting really sick and tired of you guys self promoting yourself for the first three minutes of the episode. Well, it is our podcast, so we can do what we want. And we're not, we are not, you don't sell us. You don't see us hawking stuff left and right. It's like this, Farmer grade is like that is the product that supports that make all that makes all this work. So I guess yeah, I mean you're just gonna have we to put love up doing with that. this and we've been doing it for free for a while. But I mean, at some point we are farmers. At the end of the day, we gotta make a couple bucks somehow doing this thing. So yeah. sorry I pissed you off about the self promotion and trying to get some reviews and trying to get people to share the show. You do a podcast and let me listen to it, and then I'll give you some feedback too. How about that? Wow, you got a little bitterness this morning. Well, it gets gets old after a while. And here's another hate comment I get really sick and tired of seeing. I'm kind of going off a tangent here, but so, you know, it's so funny when people look, see these shorts or these clips, they take things out of context. They're not like you guys. You guys get everything in context. So 
But, you know, the most common question or most common comment we get, hate comment, is, geez, these, do these guys even farm? Or do they just sit around and just talk about farming? They, I bet you they don't even farm. Yeah. Yep. And all I got to say to those haters is, if you want to see video evidence and video proof of that, you can go watch us actually farm at our YouTube channel or Instagram or TikTok. This will do farm. This will do farm is where you can actually see us doing the work. If you don't believe that we do shit and all we sit do is sit in these chairs and talk <laughs> shit, you can go see that for yourself to really get a get a grasp of, hey, we don't just sit in these chairs. We sit in these chairs once a week. Yep. Literally once well, a week. Once in a while, I'll come up here and take a nap because nobody knows, you know, no, nobody yeah. comes looking for you here. That shit pisses me off, too, because it's like if you uh, only if you knew. Yep. Only if you knew. So. I had somebody somebody commented uh, on one of the videos and said how rare it was to f see a modern day tractor that was only two wheel drive because my seventy eight twenty doesn't have front wheel assist and they're like they really thought that there was some fancy purpose for it. What's the purpose for that? Why wouldn't you have that tractor with front wheel assist? And I had to let them down easy and say, well, because uh, we're poor. That's that's why we don't have that tractor. That's why that tractor is not front wheel assist. The price was right. So there you go. Anyway, uh, market update, though. Market update. Okay. Uh, we are done with harvest, uh, which we're pretty pretty happy about that. Uh, one of the bonuses of farming with, uh, with David is he has a, a drag line, a manure drag line business. So he is like a taskmaster because to him, he is not thinking about being done with harvest so he can put his feet up. He's like, that's like the... That's like the first couple innings. His his real money maker is uh, drag line and manure, so he's all about that. So he's like, got to get it done, got to get it done. So anyway, we finished. Uh, we basically finished harvest yesterday. Now we're uh, trying to clean up all the messes that got left, you know, and everything that was neglected while we were doing that. But uh, man, uh, a whirlwind in southeast Iowa because we've had no. No rain. There hasn't been one weather day. Um, everybody's just going, and more guys getting done every day. It feels like this was like one of the quickest harvests I've ever been a part of, just because there was no there was no day off. Yeah, pretty much. It was just kind of go go go. Unless we had one of a one of the three of us had a something really important we had to we go to. Get out yeah, of. but other than that, it was we just knocked it out. Well, I think. We a year ago, I think we started harvest about on the about on the seventeenth or the eighteenth of September, and we finished on the twenty second of October, I think. And this year, we actually started darn near the first week of October, and we were done on what the sixteenth is today, the seventeenth, whatever. I don't know. So yeah, I mean, it just went. It went. It was kind of a grind, though. It uh, was. But I'm glad to be done. Uh, and the markets kind of reflect that excellent weather because there is a lot of pressure. Um, around here, the two big uh, feed mills that a lot of people take corn to, I just got a text from Cat's Grain that uh, one of them's closing at 5 o'clock today. And I think the other one might, they might have closed early. I don't know. But Basically, they're both full, so they're only the only room they've got for corn is what they're grinding. Now, granted, they grind a lot of corn, but I mean they are full up. Um, one of them had a basis contract last week. They decided they were going to do a basis contract, and it, I think it was twenty five cents off of the November, off the December futures, and you had to do it in five thousand bushel increments, and you obviously have to price it by the 29th of November. And I think they f that corn only had to be down to 15, 15 or 15.5. I can't remember. Anyway, they only had that out for three days and they were full. They Like, I think they put it out there and they thought, oh yeah, we'll get a little, you know, we'll get some corn out of this. They had, I mean, they were like full, all the, all the bushels that they wanted to do on that, they got like in three days. So... Uh, good yields down here, but everything's starting to pile up. So uh, corn today was down, I think it was down two cents. 
Uh, 405 is the right number. I thought it was 404, but I just got the update. 405, best local price, uh, 358. So that tells you right there, the basis has widened out. Um, just 10 days ago, when corn was 410 or so, I want to say the bids were there in the 380, 385. So obviously they're they're getting all the corn they want. Uh, 375 in Cedar Rapids. Um, over in Illinois, I was talking to somebody that just came back from there and they said that all the co-ops had their rings up and they were starting to ag bag corn and pile corn on the ground. So it's there's going to be a lot of pressure for a while. Uh, November beans, 970. Uh, Burlington, 961. Uh, 968 in Quincy. That's actually about the narrowest um, spread between the two sides of the river that I've seen in a long time. Bean meal, 315 a ton. Uh, December wheat, 572. So the market sold off today because it was announced or somebody found out the Russians sold a whole bunch of wheat and they sold it like private treaty. Like they didn't go through an exchange. So nobody knows what they sold it for, what the price was, and all the traders got nervous. They don't like that. They don't like being cut out. Uh, so that that kind of scared that kind of scared them. The other thing that scared them is exports have been really good lately, but uh, a lot of people worried about the Chinese economy and whether or not uh, China's what their what their hunger for U.S. soybeans is. So that's kind of putting some added pressure on everything. Uh, hogs, December 77.85, cattle 187.50. That's still the October contract, and feeder cattle, October contract 248. And did you see McDonald's is suing the big four beef packers, uh, claiming that they are have been in a price fixing scheme for like the last 10 years, maybe longer. I guess I didn't hear exactly, but it's like for a long time. I was gonna say they're a little late. I mean, I guess if you're gonna sue. I guess there's no wrong time to sue, but I mean, I thought I they got like all their beef from Brazil anyway. I don't know. Anyway, I guess. Well, they must. I don't. I don't know. That's funny. That's hilarious because I don't know how it matters to them, but I'm sure they're getting a hell of a good price for all well, the beef patties maybe they, they serve. They their inflation is running their prices up, and they need every penny. Yeah. They can get. Side note: If you've ever had, if you have had McDonald's in 2024, holy shit, that yeah. shit is expensive. Fast food nowadays, hot take. Fast food nowadays, uh, it ain't very fast, and it ain't fucking cheap. It it is like you might as well go cook at home at that point. All fast food is for now. It now I feel like is just convenience. That's all. It's that's yeah. its only benefit yeah because if you go to if you go to mcdonald's and you order yourself uh a double quarter pounder and with fries and a drink i can go it's 12 have, bucks yeah probably i have a we have a little we have a diner that opened up in our town uh it was a diner forever and it was closed for like 15 years and this couple bought it fixed it all up it's beautiful it's called north side diner you can get a uh, smash burger in there Single, you can get a single smash burger in there for like what ten seventy five, and if you wanted to double, I think it's three dollars more. So it's basically the same price as McDonald's. Hell of a lot better burger. Yeah, uh, but yeah, you're right. All you're paying for is the convenience, and sometimes it's really not very. Convenient. It's not very convenient. Yeah, so, and the, it's terrible for you too. Well, I mean, yeah, true. I had plenty of McDonald's and Jersey Mike's and pizzas while we were harvesting i have ate like shit the last two weeks i'm ready to yeah cleanse myself a little bit but at jersey mike's is a pretty consistent it's product, pretty though. damn good but in moderation <laughs> when you eat the italian every yeah. time you go there yeah. it kind of i don't know if that's process those processed meats <laughs> i don't know how many times yeah. you should eat that but well, it feels fresher than a quarter pound yeah, it even does. though it might not it does be. but yeah that's just my hot take uh, fast food side note today uh our printer died uh i usually always print out the questions uh printer died and it's it's an old one and so we're just uh we've got it up on the big screen r.i.p yep it, yeah yeah well, I don't. It's gonna rest in pieces because I'm chucking that son of a bitch. But uh, 
I'll give you a baseball bat. Okay. We might have to video that. Softball. Take out all my frustrations. All Slow my pitch. office. All my office frustrations. Yep. But uh, conveniently, we finally have very good uh, wireless internet here, basically on our farm. And here in the barn, we, we have, for all intensive purposes, whole farm internet. And uh, there's a company called Orbit Technologies that did that for us. And we, we got in touch with them because they, they basically did that on a much bigger scale for uh, uh, one of the hog producers around here. And I was really interested in what they were doing, got started talking with them. And um, we have internet at all our hog building sites and in the shop and in the barn and at our houses, all running off of one piece of fiber. We got rid of a bunch of bills and it's good and it's fast damn good uh orbit technologies i'll just pitch them out you're probably we're probably gonna have one of them on here because it's damn interesting what they're able to do with uh cameras and with monitoring and uh a bunch of stuff but anyway if you want to look there'll be a link in the description if you want to learn more about that it's orbit.ag is uh their website and you uh if that's something interesting you tell them that uh, the Barn Talk Boys sent you. So anyway, hey, thanks for sticking with us. You know, it's your voice. It's your seat at the table. It's your Iowa Corn Growers Association membership. The Iowa Corn Growers Association works to create opportunities for long-term Iowa corn grower profitability. And it starts with you. Becoming an ICGA member gives you a seat at the table on issues that impact your farm and the broader ag community. Each year, the ICGA implements policy priorities set by farmer members, like building demand for higher ethanol blends, expanding trade opportunities, and protecting tax credits. The Iowa Corn Growers Association works to protect family farms like ours and yours to build a profitable future. Plus, your membership gets you a host of other benefits like access to the latest news and exclusive member-only events. We believe farmers are stronger when we work together. Visit iowacorn.org backslash join to become an ICGA member today. Now, let's get back to it. You got any questions? I think we do. I think we got a good good chunk of questions. Are you done with the market update? I think you skipped a few. Oh, yeah, I did leave a little. I left you got a little out. sidetrack we, there. We got going on cattle. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, so crude oil, crude oil, 70, 70, 38. I am surprised at with everything going on in the world that crude oil has fallen like it has uh the middle east is just on like a i don't know it's like on a hairpin trigger and you never know what's going to happen next over there but oil doesn't seem to care uh, i guess that's just a testimony to what the production that we have is uh and how diversified the production has gotten around the world so i don't know Anyway, 7038 for crude oil. Uh, Bitcoin, 68,000. It's working up. Ethereum, 2,600. Tesla, uh, $220 a share. And if you haven't watched it, you need to get on the old internet and watch this. Uh, so SpaceX launched Starship, and they caught it. They caught it with their landing tower. They call it like the chopsticks. Like that, that was like watching sci-fi. Well, when he originally announced that he wanted to make that happen, people laughed at him. Oh, no, they and thought now, it was crazy crater, crater Now hell. they legit happened. He just launched a rocket in the air and then caught it. And, and it's not like that is the heaviest. My understanding is, I think this is right. Somebody will tell me if I'm wrong. It is like the heaviest thing that we have ever launched into space and they brought it back and they caught it and so what that's going to do for them is they can literally it's it they catch it and it's right on the pad where they launched it from so they don't have to like haul it from the ocean when they the the falcon nines they land like on a barge in the ocean and then they take them off, they put them on a truck, they haul them back to SpaceX, they refurbish them, then they prop them up, then they haul them down on the launch pad. Super heavy, they're going to be able to catch it right there at the pad, service it, test everything out, refuel it, 
and send it right back to space. Like, it's it's freaking crazy. And I, I think it's just, I don't know whether it's because Elon's politics have made, have kind of polarized people to where they just don't want to... Support him? Yeah. But, I mean, it is. Well, I guarantee you that's it. I'm... Mainstream media hates the guy. Well, we're going to talk a little bit so, more about it. But who used to talk about space travel to the public, the media? Yeah, and made it a huge deal. Now that nobody talks about it, nobody really get no nobody. They're not highlighting it at all. You can only just see it on social media, which it's pretty freaking incredible. We are making some strides. If I was a ten year old kid, I'd be like just, I'd I'd be glued to that crap because that yeah. just fast that would fascinate the shit out of me. It does fascinate you. You're you're I, 10 year old right I, now. I got my Han Solo. Although you are right worrying now. me, you're losing you're losing your train of thought here. We've we were, we're halfway done. through we were, we're halfway done. through the market update the, and the you only, forgot four four things. The only thing that Matt the only thing that's left gold and silver and they're both up and You got to stay sharp. We got to have this podcast go on. For, I'm going to go drink a protein shake to make sure that I don't have early onset or something i don't know but we are going to get into these questions 20 minutes in to the podcast so uh first question it's got to do with farming go figure yep. by the way if you want to know more about us or just ask us a question about anything that's not related to farming go right ahead we love talking about farming but we'll talk about just about anything just for you that for those of you that want to submit a question do farmers ever tell the truth about their crops yield? Why or why not? My opinion on that is people bullshit. Yo. I say this every year when we're combining and I talk to I talk to other farmers and they're everybody's telling you it's this great number. And you're like, well, I mean. Is that what it is that what it was showing up on the combine in real time, or was that your field average? Because to me, the field average is what your yield. That's that's a true yield. That's what you really did. And you know, what's showing up in the combine is one thing, but when you get done with that field, what is your true field average? That's what that's what your yield should be. That's what you should tell people if you tell people your yield. That's what it should be. But I don't necessarily think everybody does that. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. I think it's a bunch of bullshit. And that's why nobody, I think that's why nobody is, that's why farmers also keep it close to their chest because it's like nobody's going to give you a straight up answer anyway. And why should you give somebody a straight up answer? Or why should you just, why should you say anything in the first place? Because it's all speculation, and when you ask a farmer what their yield is, they're probably going to give you a bullshit answer anyway. Well, you, so I have multiple answers that I give because I, but on, truly, I don't give a shit. Like, I, if people want to know our yield, whatever, like, cool, we're competing, but like, yeah, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. I don't know why it's such a hush well, hush it's thing. Kind of a game because this is, this is what, this is what I do. So, I have I have neighbors that it doesn't matter what number you gave them, they're gonna come back to you with a better number than that. Oh yeah, yeah. One they're, up. they're like if you give them a number, they're gonna look at you like you should be out of business because their number is so much better than that. And it doesn't matter what number you start with. So you got those guys. Then you got the guy that really wants to know that, you know, you run into that ass that asks all the time. And you know that that guy is going to turn around and tell everybody, anybody that will listen. So you give that guy a different number. I usually give him a really poor number because if I'm going to spread it out, I'm, I'm going to be like, oh yeah, Whistler's Corn's making a hundred bushel. It's terrible. Like you, I tell him just about what I think I can get by with compared to what I think yields kind of are because i know he's going to run his mouth and tell everybody and then the other phenomenon is and at this i'm curious whether people give us a comment on this or i will clip this up but does everybody have a farmer have a neighbor that when you start combining 
they don't give a shit. They just show up. They, they like literally just show up and just get right in the combine with you. Like they, they just, they don't care. They want to know and they're just going to come get in and chat you up. And you know, they don't really care. They just want to watch your yield monitor. <laughs> that's what, that's what they want to do. I'm curious. Do, do you all have somebody like that? Because we have somebody like that in our area, which, and it's fine. He's harmless, but I just think like, I would never do that. Even, even to neighbors that are like good friends of mine, I would never just pull in their field run over there, hop up, get in the cab, be like, oh, let's make a few rounds. You know, I wouldn't do that. But anyway. <laughs> and you're just staring at the yield yeah, monitor. Like, yeah, exactly right. Just I just staring at the screen. I think that's crazy. That is crazy. So uh, it runs the gamut. But the other thing is, like this year, I feel like for some people, our yields in Southeast Iowa have been really, really good. And so I feel like, some people, if I told them what our crops made and I gave them the honest answer, I don't think they believe me. I don't think they believe me anyway. So at the end of the day, I just don't think, like I usually just tell people when they ask, I say, really good. They're doing really good. I don't. Yeah, I typically I, say that too. I don't give them a number. Yeah, I, I say yields are really good. Unless, I, unless you're really close... Unless you're a trusted source that just, like, I know that you're just genuinely asking and you might not even be a farmer. You're just curious. Because, like, again, I don't, I'm not, <laughs> I don't hold it so close to my chest where I think it's this big deal to not, yeah. but I'm also not going to just go out of my way and Miss shout people. from the roots, rooftops. Like, if somebody around me is a farmer and says what their yield, I'm not going to say anything about yeah. yield of our crops unless somebody asks me. Right. I'm not going to jump in a conversation and one-up somebody because yep. they're talking about their yield. I will not say anything about our yield unless I'm asked. So what was your yield? Do we really want to tell them? Or? No, we're not going to tell them. They're yeah, we're going to keep that a secret. It was less than 300, but it was more than 200 for corn. Yep. Which is still pretty good. Had some corn on corn acres. Corn on corn this year was amazing. I will just say so that good that what? What are we doing next year? We're gonna plant corn on corn on everything because we got we beans. got enough shit to haul. Yeah. So we uh, we have always had extra manure. Basically, we've had one barn of manure that we've pretty much given away for the cost of the hauling um, because I've rotated. I've always had one one chunk that we've planted beans and I. I, it always has kind of just been in the back of my mind. It's like, why are you giving this manure away? Like, you might as well use that because you can grow really good corn on corn if you manage it right. And I feel like we can manage it right. And so we're just going to do that on everything. I'm not saying that I won't ever plant soybeans again, but for the next couple anyway, I'm just going to go corn on corn because I've got the manure and I might as well use it. And Beans um, are shit, too. Well, beans are such a pain in the ass. Like, this year they dried down so fast that we weren't intending to, like, we started doing corn and then it's like you look around and everybody's doing beans and you're like, damn, these things must be getting dry. And they, they did get dry. And so everybody went and got that. And... The thing is, they were drying down, but yet the stems were still green in a lot of places, and they were... We didn't really have trouble combining them because David traded combines, and his old platform is not anywhere too big for the machine that he's got. So, I mean, it it would power through them, but it was just kind of a pain in the ass. And I, for what they make and for what the price is, I can, I can make more money per acre planting corn on corn than I can doing beans. So anyway, Well, I want to uh, be devil's advocate here. What if what if what if there's somebody out there that says, Torque, we don't want to create the another dust bowl here. You gotta have some rotation. You gotta have right. some soil health. What are we gonna do? Right. What are we gonna do? What do you say to the haters? Well is there anybody else doing this out there corn on corn? Oh, there's plenty of people doing corn on corn, especially if you got hog buildings. There's plenty of guys that plant corn on corn. And we no till all our stuff 
Um, and we do a good job of keeping, uh, keeping up on, you know, our nutrient program. Um, I have not done cover crops. Oh, I know it's terrible, but I don't know. I just can't like this year. There's guys out. We haven't had rain in, I don't know, 40 days. I don't know how long it's been since we've had rain. Um, and there's guys out there drilling cover crops, and I'm like, well, for me, if I can't get, if I'm going to do that and I can't get it established good before winter, and then it comes in the spring and it just gets started, and then I'm going to go in there and burn it down so that I can plant, have I gotten the benefit out of that $30 an acre that's cost me to do it? Mm, I don't know. And if you want to talk about organic matter, Nothing will build organic matter in your fields more than growing corn on corn. And to me, I I don't think why, that, huh? Why does it why does it build? Well, because you have all that you have all that residue that you're just adding to every year. And um, we do we we use what they call a. Uh, so when we say we're no till. We are, but I think you can argue that a little bit because, for one, we drag line all our manure on, and that machine that you drag line with has cultures on it, and I think they're 16 inches apart, maybe. Um, so you're actually you're doing a little bit of tillage there where you're knifing that manure in, and then we'll spread our bio cow. Um, and whatever fertilizer, if any, we need. And then we have a, we have a chopper. We call it a, we call it a chopper. It's a Bessler. So it's just a mechanical stock chopper. It has baskets that are about 16 inches wide and they're, they're offset to the row. So like the machine we have is an eight, an eight row machine. And we run that down. So that basket is running right down where your, your row was and it's busting those root balls and it it does i mean i guess you can't say it doesn't do any tillage because you're actually doing a little bit of tillage um, where you're throwing them out so i guess we're not a purist if there is such a thing as a purist but by the time we're done that all of that fodder and all of that residue is managed pretty well and it breaks down really really well over the winter and i mean it's i'm not going to make i'm not getting paid for this but we've been using midwest bio midwestern bioags uh uh bio cow product for like 13 years probably and i'm i am sold on that with uh manure because I feel like the soil biology is way better in our ground than it was when I started when I started making the decisions. And our yields and our the way the soil, like the soil, the way it holds moisture, the way it absorbs water after rain, um, I don't know. All it all seems to be getting better. That's where I'm like, I'd like to do cover crops, but I just can't make that pencil. It, like when I look at the numbers on that, for what it cost me to do it, the seed, the machine, and then to burn it down, I'm like, mm, I don't know. I just can't. I'm not ready to, to take that bite yet. So, But we'll give you an update next fall. I mean, if, it's, if it goes to hell in a handbasket, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, it was great when it wasn't. Um, but that's the path we're going. So that was kind of a lot. That was I feel a like kind I was a in lot. a therapy session there. Yeah. Well, uh, it's it's fresh in our mind. So good to talk about it, it now. Uh, let's do a fun one because that one about put me to sleep. So is the local <laughs> Is the local brew pub trend over? What's next? Yeah, I mean, you could buy. You might be able to talk to this better than I can. The reason that we put this on there is because we have a a local brewery 
uh, just a little ways north of us, and they sell their product around. You can get it in a lot of the grocery grocery stores, and they have a restaurant there. And we really like the place. Food's good. Um, beer's good. I don't drink much craft beer, but uh, you and your brother like it. And I dabble. Yeah, I dabble. But they're closing up. Closing up. I think uh, the brewery whole th- the whole brewery uh trend is kind of it's gonna kick some people out it's getting to that point where the big dogs are gonna win and everybody else that wasn't able to get themselves established and really build a brand and all that they're closing because times are tough restaurant business is already tough but i feel like the brewery business was a little bit of a fad it was like the froyo back in the early 2000s every college town had a freaking froyo shop and there was a lot of froyo shops that closed down because uh, it was a fad. It it didn't it didn't last very long. So I feel like the brewery thing is kind of in the, is in the same boat. Uh, I'm not very happy that our local brewery cro- closed down, but I think times are tough. I think there's too much competition. Yeah, uh, I think it's just one of those industries that exploded, and now that it's come back down to earth. And all these breweries have popped up. It's made it really hard to compete because there's just too many. Yeah. And do you think? Do you think the volume? Like, and I bet it's co- fucking expensive to operate one of them son of bitches. During to brew all your own beer and to, I bet the overhead is crazy. Well, right before COVID, and then going through COVID, I mean, it right. was huge. Everybody, like, there were. And COVID didn't help. No, COVID. And that kicked a lot of people's asses. But as far as, do you think it's a deal that it, do you think consumption, do you think consumption has stayed up or do you think people are cutting back on the amount of craft? Like, do you think that the the onset of all this, I mean, there's a new freaking seltzer or this or vodka drink or whatever, every week there's some new thing coming out. Do you think the pressure from all of that I think it could be psychological. I mean, people don't want to spend more money on... People want to find comfort and shit that they're used to right now because there's a lot of uncertainty. Yep. So they're going to go to the traditional Bush Light, Bud Light, uh, Coors Light, Miller Light because that's their baby. That's their their reliable and trust in drinking craft beer. It's expensive. It's more expensive than you know, just your traditional beer and you don't know what you're going to get most of the time. Not everybody's in the mood to try some new shit. Not everybody's in the mood to try, um, every new flavor of craft beer. And I'm one of those people, you know, that brewery had a, they had a classic and I always got the classic cause it was just Mr. Pretty consistent. It was consistent. It was Mr. Yeah. Reliable. And I just think, I think you're right. I think it could be the brewery, whole brewery hop fad, but also uh, it could just be the consumption of craft beers also come down too. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of millennials and younger that do love craft beer. They do love the diff- the variety and the difference. I dabble, but it's not. I'm not going to go out of my way to go get some craft beer if I'm right. going to the liquor store. I just am not. Uh, I I do like the new seltzers that have came out. I think, uh, you know, if you're going to do some tailgating or do a darty or whatever, like I feel like a, a really nice high noon is a good just start start of your drinking adventure. <laughs> I just think that's a really good starter and then tr- switch to beer or, or liquor after. Um, but, yeah, I I – it doesn't surprise me. It's an interesting question that you, that you that you brought up. I don't know if it's a mix of both or one or the other, but all I know is I think breweries are in for a little bit of hurt, it seems. Do you think that the boom in... Do you think whiskey's not far behind? I mean, I, and this also brings up the question of, is this just like any... Is this just like America right now? Is this every consumer good out there? Like the internet 
and social media and all this stuff that's come has given everybody and their dog a chance and opportunity to come out with a new product, a new whiskey, a new brewery, a new uh, beer, craft beer, seltzer. There's just a lot of competition because I think it's never been easier to start a business than in today's age. Yep. And so whether you're talking about whiskey, whether you're talking about jerky, whether you're talking about beer, a seltzer, whether you're talking about direct to consumer meat, business. direct to consumer meat, you're talking about candy, you're talking about supplements. I mean, it is fucking competitive no matter what industry you're in. And I think, I think it might just be the market finding itself. The market's finding itself. Yeah. Cause like all these celebrities and all these influencers, all these athletes, they're, they're making all this money. They partner with an agency or, or whoever they come out with a, Product. Conor McGregor comes out with a whiskey. The Rock comes out with tequila. Uh, I mean, yeah. LeBron James just came out with Hennessy. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's competitive. Yeah. It's really, really competitive. Yeah. So it makes it hard on. That's why I, I always, t when people ask about farmer grade it, and, and they want to talk about any advice for starting a business or direct to consumer business, meat business. I really, truly believe if you're going to start a business in today's world, it's never been easier, but that makes it that much more competitive. Uh -huh. So you really got to know your shit and you really got to like, you can't just half-ass it and wing it. Like right. you got to have a brand identity. You got to have authenticity. a core, a core, what's, what are you doing that's different? Like what makes you unique? Like you really got to think out what your brand looks like and what it feels like and what your mission is because... There's just too many people out here that'll eat your lunch. Yep. It, it, it's just the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I asked that about whiskey because I feel like, you know, in COVID and just coming out of COVID, whiskey went crazy. And the secondary market, the prices that people were getting for bottles that they couldn't get where they lived, I mean, it's just nuts. But I feel like that's tempering down a little bit. I feel like that market's softening. And then at the same time, because there was so much money in that, because people were willing to pay these inflated prices, you have got just oodles of people getting into the whiskey market and blending and just crazy stuff. And I think we're going to see the same thing there. I think that... There's a lot of that that's coming to market at the very time that people are tightening up on what they're willing to spend their money on and they're going to buy what they're comfortable with and what has worked and they're less, they're less adventurous as far as trying new things. And so I think it's going to be, I feel like it's going to be kind of a, a real double whammy for people people that are trying to get into that business so i don't know we'll see i just hope the secondary market goes down a little bit because there's some bottles i'd like to get that i won't i will not spend the money today but i might if the price was right yeah so yeah it's it's interesting to see how it all plays out but um that's just a little bit of uh and that was an observation that we had um well and going with that talking about the consumer and just things being tighter we just threw this in here because i saw this story yesterday but true value hardware which is like 116 years old something like that i mean it's over 100 years old um they filed for bankruptcy and they have basically struck a deal to sell themselves to do it best uh, which is another hardware um, chain. chain, which, you know, build, build your own joke off that. But I guess they really they really did do it best because they did a little better than True Value. Again, still Ace ate their lunch. Yeah. Ace, Ace is eating everybody's lunch in that business. It's They've built a brand. Ace has built a brand, and they've done a good job of getting in the right towns and the right places. And I, I have never, you probably knew true value. I had never heard a true value hardware store. 
Well, there used to be a true value. There used to be a true value in Washington, um, and then it closed. I don't know, whenever. But uh, that's like coast to coast. There was a store. There were stores called Coast to Coast. That was a hardware store, and it went out. But yeah, you talk about Ace. That's really interesting because Ace is kind of unique in this whole deal because they really are kind of that. They're competing against like Lowe's and Home Depot and places like that for tools and kind of home and garden stuff, but they don't have the lumber side of it. And I saw the other day a lot of people were somebody was somebody was digging on them because their prices like they're not a their stuff is definitely not cheap. So like we have an ace in our town and I'm thankful to have it because it saves me a lot of trips to Iowa City. But you if you had a Menards across the street there's a lot of products that they have there that you could buy cheaper at Menards. You're paying for the convenience to have it there. But I will say, the service you get at an Ace Hardware is a hell of a lot better than the service you get at Menards. And they'll actually have it. Like, they'll actually have it. And if they don't have it, a lot of times, like, they can get it the next day. But, yeah, Ace, I feel like Ace has really done, really done well. Um and I don't know the story on true value, but I think there's just a lot of tightening going on. I mean, this this inflation thing, it is not eased up. The Fed may be lower in interest rates, but I have not seen anything that tells me that consumer prices are moving. It up. hasn't gotten cheaper on the budget. No. My, my monthly budget's only gone up yeah. as far as what we spend... It's like you 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 started when when Kat and I started dating, the mo- the amount of disposable income we had at the end of the month was more than and it's time's just gone on. It's like, well, God, has our lifestyle changed that much? No. Yeah. Hasn't really changed. Have less, <laughs> less left over. So it's it's everything that's it's gone up. I'm not seeing it go down. So do you think? And I said before we started today, I didn't really want to talk about politics, and so we we purposely didn't choose questions in that genre because we're what are we? We're less than oh boy, we're less than thirty days from the yeah election. I don't even know what it is, but. Do you think, like, when I talk to people around, we all we all have the same conversations about, you know, what stuff costs and the money it takes and nothing is getting cheaper. I feel like that, it, I feel like that's a universal truth. And I just question how many people are looking at this election as a choice between what you have and what you had. And Kamala's done a great job of messaging like we can never go back. She's like, we can never go back. And she wants to paint Trump as, you know. That's just- all she talks about. She can't bring up any. She refers to her website to tell people to go look at what she wants to do with her policies, but won't say them in an yeah. interview. Right. All she wants to talk about is how big and bad of a guy Donald Trump is. Yeah. That is all she talks about. That is all she keeps running down our throats. And it's just like you're you're pushing people closer to Trump than you don't even know. Well, that's what that's my point because when I when I think about all of that, like we can't go back. I'm like, well, I'd really like to go back. I don't like where he lives rent free in that whole party. He 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 lives rent free in their head, and you're complaining and talking about Trump. Only help three years. You're talking about what he did in his presidency three and a half years ago, and you won't talk about anything you're gonna do or when you, you get, have done when you're gonna get pre- become pre- if you yeah. get elected president. It's like, what in your right mind thinks that that makes me want to vote for you? Like I don't yeah. understand. But there, Dad, there are people. I have looked around the internet. There are die hard people that just will not come off that hill. Yeah, I know. They hate Donald Trump Trump. so much, so much that they will not deviate. 
Here's from something. voting to not vote for him. They will vote for Kamala every time because they just physically cannot vote for him. They have Trump derangements. And they them. buy everything that the media tells them, every news outlet, every legacy media outlet, every legacy newspaper, they buy what they say. They don't believe in any conspiracy theories whatsoever that have come true. They don't believe in any... They genuinely believe the government has their best interests in mind. They're genuinely trying to help them, and they buy everything that they're told by, this, by the establishment in the system. And those people will vote for Kamala 100% of the time. Because that's, well, the, tr it. that's the truth. It's like we live in this world where you, when you go on the, the mainstream media and you talk to liberals... They live in that world where the what is told to me by the establishment, the that is what I believe. Yeah. The facts, the studies, anything that they come out with, I believe it. Yeah. They do believe in no, no, they don't believe in any ill will that the establishment might have on their people or, and they just take everything like to heart and take it. And I it's crazy you. to me. I got you. It's crazy. Uh, here's a question that I don't know, but those of you out there, I just thought about this. Uh, if if Kamala was to become president, who's going to be her secretary of ag? Is she going to hold over Vilsack that we have now? Uh, and if Trump becomes president, who is going to be his secretary of ag? Because it's not going to be Sonny Perdue. I wouldn't. I would assume not. I wouldn't think he'd bring him back. So I don't. Has there been any talk about that? I don't know if any. This thing has all gone so fast that I don't feel like anybody has even put together a list of what the possibilities Nobody's are. Nobody's even talked about. I haven't even heard so, anybody talk about farming. No. Yeah. I. Well, I, there is a time. There's no time. There's yeah. no time. There's been no campaign stops. You know, you think about a normal, you think about a normal election cycle, you know, there's all the photo ops where these candidates come and they ride around on the combine and do all that. There's been none of that. There's no time for that. So... I don't know. We're getting close, though. We're getting we're getting really close. Um, do you think the hurricane? Do you think that hurts? Uh, who do you think that hurts more? Kamala. As far as the hundred percent Kamala, she didn't. She went on Call Her Daddy's podcast the, the day after uh, Hurricane Milton hit, and then FEMA couldn't was what going to give seven hundred fifty dollars to people for yeah. aid. Horrible look on her part. Yep. Horrible look. She couldn't have timed it up any worse. Yep. And they and supposedly she said... Deal, she tried to make a deal out of calling Ron DeSantis, and Ron DeSantis played her like a fiddle and yep. was like, what are you going to do for me? Yep. Why would I waste my time talking to you? Yep. I've never talked to a vice president during any of the hurricanes that have ever come. I thought it was well played. I thought, old, I thought uh, DeSantis did a damn good job on that. So. Yeah, I think it hurt her bad, and I don't know if... It really hurt Trump because he's not the he vice president. He was on the Yeah, ground. but he yeah, he went there. So it actually helped him probably. But uh that whole hurricane thing and again, what they tell us is going on in North Carolina and the victims that were affected by that hurricane versus what is actually being said by the people through the internet and, and social media, thank God for X. Two different stories. Yep. Two completely different stories. Those people were in crisis and needed help, and they were telling us that, oh, it's not as bad as what you think, and we're helping them, and $750. $750 is a slap in the fucking face to yep. those people. Slap in the face. Yeah, when, you're, when, you're how, when your entire life, life got screwed. washed down the mountain, $750 doesn't go over. And the whole FEMA thing that we they spent... Part, like FEMA donated money to go to Ukraine or some shit like they spent money of FEMA's budget yeah. on other things and there's no money left in FEMA's budget to like actually help with disasters. That's a problem. It's a mess. It's a mess. But you think the votes will get counted? <sighs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I would All love to questions. believe I would love to believe in the integrity of our voting system. I will I Here's just, what I'll say. If it if it looks like 
it's a fair race and the votes are coming in fair from the time that I go wake up by the I'm time going. I go to bed and there's in that trajectory stays that way while I'm asleep the next morning I'll feel like it was whoever wins I'll feel like it's fair but if I go to fucking bed that night and I wake up the next morning and the fucking whole thing has flip-flopped out of nowhere that's where I get a little speck that's where I get suspicious yep that's where I get suspicious and that's where people have got suspicious in the past yep when you watch it go to sleep get up and it is a completely different so drastically different that you're like, how in the hell oh, did that happen? Gosh. So it's I don't know. Exhausting. But yeah, I don't, I'm not here to say that if like, that's the narrative that gets spin and I see in the comments all the time is people say, well, Trump, you know, um, Republicans, if Trump doesn't win, they're going to say it was rigged. I'm not, I'm not going to say it's rigged. If it looks like she's going to win from the onset set and she, She's looking like she's going to win, and I go to bed that night, and Kamala is winning. I, I, I am thinking when I wake up in the morning, Kamala is probably going to be president. I'm thinking when I wake up in the morning, I'm thinking, where is ammo on sale today? Yeah. Because I need to go buy some. <laughs> I, need, I need something. I need something. I need water purification. I need, you name it, I need something. need food. You'd stock up on cans. Yep, I need some. Start canning, get your garden going yep, again. Absolutely. Yep. I I will have my priorities may change a little bit, I guess. Yeah. It'll be know. we'll see. We didn't mean to get political. We did get political. You shouldn't have you shouldn't even I know. You shouldn't I just, have even waved the carrot. I know. Because we know. went down the rabbit hole. But it is what it is. It is coming very, very soon. It's hard to not talk about it. And um I just hope I just hope and pray we make the right decision. And I I think I might know what the right decision is, but we'll see how it all plays out regardless of who gets picked as president. That'll be we'll know after that president's done being president if it was the right decision or not. So we don't know. But well, look, there's this much about it. Uh I think we're gonna have I think we're having eighteen people at our house for Thanksgiving. My both my <laughs> brothers. Both my brothers <laughs> And uh, their wives and most of the grandkids, most of the kids uh, are coming. And uh, under no scenario will there not be somebody pissed off. <laughs> oh, God, it is going to be tempting. <laughs> It'll be so tempting and I so to hope, I so bring hope it up. that I'm not, the, I'm not in the group that's pissed off because I will enjoy, I will enjoy just looking at Trish every once in a while and acting like I'm going to say something just to watch her oh, squirm it's and so give me the hairy tempting. eyeball. It's so tempting to say something because I, I've i always had that little antagonist. I like to antagonize people just to have fun a little bit. Yep. And that's just going to be that topic that's just a little bit like, man, what about that election? Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Just shut up and well, just let I mean, it it's been, play out. You were you oh, were like, man. I don't know, how old were you the last time that we all got together? Long time. I won't say anything because it's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. We don't, we don't want it to be a bad experience. And if we don't behave right, it could be a very long time before we do but it But let's again. face it, everybody in our family probably knows our how we lean and yep. we're pretty open about it. And they I think okay. the worst people, though, are people that make politics their whole life that can't interact with people that right like i have fit people we have people in our family that are liberal we have people in our family that are conservative but that can't that's not going to stop us from sitting down and have, sharing a meal together and having a good time that's where it's just like god you're people like that that can't even just function and not talk about politics or can't even sit in the same room with somebody that's not on the that's on the other side that's where it's just like man got a problem you're kind of you're kind of the problem. Not happy. Yeah, it's not happy it's people. a little ridiculous, but anyway, I think uh, that's gonna wrap it up. We did a we did a lot of whirlwind in here. We went back on. We had a lot of notes. We had a lot of side notes. We had a lot of hot takes. Uh, this was like a Q and A slash hot topics. We did answer some questions. I hope the people that uh, asked those questions got the answers that they were looking for. Um, 
But hey, it's our first it's our first rodeo uh, since harvest. So give us some grace. We're gonna get back on our back on our game and Torx one liners are gonna be coming out like crazy here. And Planning then, on having a guest next week. Yeah. If I can pull it off. I think yeah. I think we got it. So we feel good that harvest is out of the way. It was our brains are a little fried and just getting everything else done that we had to get done. We but didn't break anything though. Didn't break anything. Of, so uh, I spilled a little corn on the ground. I feel like I do that every year. But I got it clean. Left up. left the wagon door open a couple t- yeah. uh, one time. One time. One time. You did pretty good. Yep. It's hard. It, the hardest transition from for a grain cart driver, and that's what my main job was, but you did, had to jump in for me occasionally. When you go from beans to corn, and then when you got two two different sets of wagons that are different, yep. that uh, you gotta you gotta just feel it. You gotta feel it, man. Yep. You got to feel it. You got to shut that gate. It's a perfect time. Yeah. Now, that's something we should talk about. Shut the gate on the no, rain car. I want to know this. So, I just want to know this. I see. So, we run. We've got a J&M. What is it? An 875? I think. Something like that. Um, and it's got that. It's got a really nice... Um, the... The boot swivels, the end of the auger swivels in and out, and really nice. But you you have got to make sure that that auger is emptied out, and the gate you got to shut the gate. So you got to anticipate. You got to shut the gate and let that auger empty out before you shut the PTO off. My question is, is that the way that all of these carts are designed? Because the problem with that is if you're loading a, a really a, like a tall wagon, like a Brent, like a Brent um, six, uh, what the heck is it? 657. Um, they sit a little taller. And if you're in a spot where, if you're in a spot where they're a little higher than the than the field level, like if you've got it on, if you've got it on the side of a field or whatever, and you got to shut that thing off quick because you're going to run it over. Well, we've never done it, but David, they when they got that cart, uh, they had to replace the gearbox in the bottom of the auger because, uh, I guess, from not getting that cleaned out. And I'm like, that's a piss poor design. So uh, let us know in the comments. Like, I feel like somebody needs to design these carts to where if you have to shut them off, even if there's some corn in there, you're not going to ruin the damn thing. Yeah. So anyway, well, it's I enough to drive you, a man to drink it. It is. It is. And I poured you a little bit. We got Weller 12-year here. This was a gift. This was a gift sent in by somebody from Wisconsin, and I forgot to write it down. But we will we will praise them out on the next podcast. See, that's how rough we are. Yeah, we came not prepared. But a uh, great friend of the show, great friends of the show, uh, sh- uh, sent this bottle of Weller to us. So we are going to give it a try, give it a whirl here on our whiskey minute. So I poured you up some already. Well, that's a pretty light pour. Well, I poured mine mine even light lighter. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it, it a go. Smells good. What do you toast to? Uh, Cheers to a safe harvest and both of us keeping all our fingers and toes. It was a safe harvest, and we we do have all our ligaments. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that... That's really good. That is... Uh, that's got a little smoky flavor to it, and that's good shit. It's got a little smoke flavor. It's got a little sweetness to it. <clears throat> that's really smooth. That is smooth. The It's not... doesn't have a bad bite on it at all. No. I, that's one of the better bottles that I that's think I've fire. ever sampled. Yeah, that's better. That's one of the better ones we've done on the show, for sure. Uh, we'll hide that bottle when all the family comes. We're going to we're <laughs> gonna take all the bottles that we really like and hide them so that nobody goes off on a tangent and... Yeah, that's that's good shit. I recommend that. If you can find that somewhere, thanks. That's good. That's you can find good. that, grab that, because that's good shit. What do you Weller rate 12 that? Weller 12-year. Uh, I don't know. I would rate it. I would rate it. 
I'd rate that like a nine. Yeah, I was going to say nine. The only reason I wouldn't rate it higher than that is because I just don't know what. I don't know if you never be give. I don't know if you never give it. Give out a ten. No, because you never know if you're going to find something that's better. I give that a nine point two. Oh, look at you. Nine point two. That's good. Yeah, I would drink that on ice all day long. There you go. So that's your whiskey minute, uh, ladies and gents. Weller twelve year. If you can find it, go pick it up. Highly recommend. Yeah, we couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah, somebody sent somebody that to sent us. that to us. So yeah, um, thank you for sending that bottle. We are pieces of shit for forgetting your name, but we we will, will throw you out. We will next. shout you out on the next yeah. podcast. We owe you. We owe you a, a barn talk. We owe you a we owe you a barn talk hat or shirt or something. Yeah, uh, we'll have to hook you up. Yeah. All right. Well, that's gonna wrap it up, guys. Uh, we appreciate every single one of you for your support. We love you guys. Share the show if you got any value. Submit your questions at barntalkshow at gmail dot com. Um, get some farmer grade meat. Pay the pay the Metreon, and we'll see you back here next week for another episode. <laughs>